I tested 5 PS5 games with motion controls. Let's see how good they are. First off, you can achieve mouse-like precision with good motion controls. This is how it works. Using Steam, I can use the motion sensors of my controller to emulate a mouse and use my wrists in conjunction with the analog stick to aim. This is called gyro aim, and since gyro works just like a mouse, we don't need aim assist and we can be just as fast as a mouse. This is what good motion controls look like, but does the PS5 deliver the same experience? I started my journey with Astro's Playroom, a delightful game that makes brilliant use of the DualSense unique features. Every surface has its own controller vibration, and the game is packed with easter eggs and interactive elements that make it an absolute joy. Astro's Playroom also integrates motion controls seamlessly. In each level, there is a section that requires motion input, and they all work like a charm. None of them feel unresponsive or frustrating like some Wii games. But what about aiming? Well, there is this level that you can acquire a bowl, and when you aim, gyro is active. And oof, it's bad. Gyro is emulating an analog stick, and when that happens, you can always expect super low sensitivity, drag effect, delay, and dead zones. But hey, at least it doesn't have noise. I'm joking. And this is what bad motion controls look like. That's a huge problem. This game is supposed to be a tech demo to show developers all the incredible uses of the DualSense. So if the gyro implementation in this game sets the example that developers are striving for, this is a tragedy. Really, I don't understand how all of these mini games are able to have super responsive motion controls feedback, but not for aiming. It's a strong bad first impression. But how about other games? Next, I took a shot at Horizon Forbidden West. Just like Astro's Playroom, Gyro Aim is active when you aim. As you can see from the less than stellar footage, hitting shots is a challenge. Bruh. Bruh, 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 bruh. This game too emulates an analog stick, resulting in drag, delay, and dead zones. Astro's Playroom lacks an options menu, but Horizon provides one. And unfortunately, any changes you make to the analog configuration also impact gyro controls. It's a baffling design choice, potentially leading to other developers to assume that gyro is just inherently flawed, which seems to be the case for the next game, Resident Evil 4 Remake. I made a whole video about this game because of the inconsistencies related to motion controls. It's very funny, in a bad way. But other than what I said in my previous video, there isn't much to say. It is just like Horizon, but when you aim, the analog stick doesn't look up or down. I guess the devs are trying to copy Splatoon, but in a game like this, this just doesn't make any sense. The sensitivity is too low, so if you press the aim button and your controller was in a weird position, you need to release the button and press it again. This is terrible. Next, we have Deep Rock Galactic. This game also emulates the analog stick, but unlike the previous games, this is actually pretty good. Yes, the Dead Zone slider for the analog stick also changes the Dead Zones for Gyro, but that's about it. It works great. There isn't much delay or drag, and yeah, some small movements are lost, but it's very playable. And apparently, Gyro is enabled by default in precision mode. The biggest problem with this game is the sensitivity. The default isn't even one-to-one -one scale, which means that one full rotation of the controller in real life doesn't even translate to one full rotation in the game. And the max sensitivity isn't even one to two sensitivity. I like to play with one to three or one to two in most games, but this is just way too low. I will make an exclusive video for Deep Rock Galactic sharing my PC configs for this game, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Okay, so four games until now, just emulated an analog stick. So I expect that this video will end in more tragedy, right? Well, God of War Ragnarok is incredible. It's what gyro aim should always be. Though this feature is a little hidden in the settings with a weird name, but that doesn't really matter. The feature isn't emulating an analog stick, it's just directly controlling the camera. The sensitivity follows the natural sensitivity scale, meaning that one sensitivity means one-to-one -one movement and so on. There are multiple options to tweak, there is no drag, no delay, no dead zones, it works just like a mouse. 
Seriously, this is absolutely amazing. I recommend this to everyone, because this game have a pretty strong aim, which is fine, it really helps to maintain the flow of combat, but aiming by yourself in a specific part of the enemy is just so satisfying, and I can't praise it enough. Also, all of this was made by one guy at the end of development, so thank you Tim Homero. I know I was a bit negative in this video, but I wanted to make it clear that I'm sure that developers try their best in all of these cases. Usually, gyro aim ends up like this because devs are trying to minimize noise, or they just don't know the fundamentals of good gyro. If that's you, read the gyro wiki, please. And that's why I'm here, to let you know that you are missing out on something great. Speaking of something great, I didn't talk about them in this video, but Fortnite, COD Modern Warfare 2, Deathloop and Neon White have incredible gyro implementations just like God of War. But I will leave them to another video. If you are eager to explore gyro aim on PC, I have created a comprehensive guide linked in the description. And if you would like to see more motion control games, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.